stuff. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's really fucking sick. Yeah, Scotty's been on it. Fuck oh, yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. Um, Weird Sisters. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, you know, Aubrey and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, so... Now you'll be on it. Boom! Or now you, you are on it. Let's do it. No, this stuff's fun, dude. Awesome. Alright, dude. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Nashville Artists. I'm Jordan, and today Josh Norfleet is here. What's up, man? Welcome to my house. How are you? Thank you. Thank you for the tour, also. I, uh, I appreciate it when someone invites me in their home and they give they give a tour of their surroundings i always appreciate it. i'm like this is how i live yeah no I, I i enjoy that honestly and thank you for showing me all the stuff about your uh, your grandma that was all that was cool man i enjoyed that odor yeah yeah i i enjoyed that man yeah that was that was wild very cool but thank you for having me i appreciate it absolutely so where are you from i am from kokomo indiana it is a, a Midwest town right above Indianapolis, maybe like 45 minutes away from Indy. I uh, I grew up there, pretty much lived there until I was 21. Actually, no, I may have been 20, 21, 22, but I basically, yeah, lived there my whole life. Huh. Do you have any siblings? I have an older sister and a younger sister, but I'm the middle child. I have, I'm the middle child syndrome. Oh, yeah. Yes. You're the heart of the family. Exactly. That, well, I don't know. Being a middle child, there it's a little bit of both. You know what I mean? There's like a little bit of hardship and a little bit of like awesomeness with it. I don't know. Because there's always... I always felt like I would get special treatment in some ways of being the middle child, but also I would get like worse treatment in other ways as a middle child. I don't know. It was always different, but no, I love my sisters though. They're awesome. Awesome. Are they musical? They're not. My younger sister kind of is. She could play like a little bit of some bass and piano and like nothing serious. My older sister is not. She doesn't play music either, but the, I just the only time I ever remember her being interested in guitar is there was a boy she liked that also played guitar, and she was like, "Hey, do you think you could show me some things to you know try to converse this boy?" And she didn't last long, but yeah, she doesn't play either. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's getting get married actually. It's uh, she's getting married in October. Oh wow. Yeah, I'd be really excited about that. That's your older sister. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's uh, getting married. Um, what is her name? Jessica. Jessica. Yeah. My whole family start with G, the letter J. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My Jesse, Jenny, Jessica, Josh, Jaden. My dad's email address a long time for a long time was a Norfleet5Js at AOL.com or something. I don't think it exists anymore, but... Wow. Uh, but, yeah. No, I uh, have two sisters and love them to death. I wish I could see them more, but... Uh, Where do they live? My younger sister did move to Lexington, Kentucky for a while. She was going to school at the University of Kentucky. But I think she's moved back to Indiana now. And I think they're both in the Indianapolis area. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they both live like in Indy. Yeah, oh. what we call it. Indy. Mm -hmm. The short term of Indianapolis, yeah. Right. Cool. So what were you into as a kid? Man, I... Uh, I really liked video games, which is something about me now that I, is not true. I don't play many video games now. I, I like to do it, but I just don't spend a lot of time doing it now, which is probably a good thing because I spent a lot of time doing it when I was young. It was like hardcore into PS2, Nintendo 64, that was a big one. The Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, like all of those, dude, I fucked with a heavy. Am I allowed to curse on this? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> what were your main games? <sighs> Dude, there was a game on PS2 that I was obsessed with. It was called Jack and Daxter. Oh, uh, Did yeah. you ever play Jack and Daxter? Uh, no, but I just, I know what it looks yeah. like. And I've seen it. And... Oh, that game was so fun. That, I played a lot of, like, um, Zelda. You know what I mean? Yeah. Zelda was a big one. A lot of just, like, Grand Theft Auto and... Super Smash Brothers shit like that, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. 
When did you first get into music? Um, actually, my my dad's a musician. Oh, I should have asked about your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my mom doesn't play music, but my dad plays music. They're both into music too, but my dad primarily is a five string banjo player. Oh wow! And most of the music that I grew up listening to and starting to play, like my first like introduction of playing music, was bluegrass music, and. My primarily, I would just kind of hang around with like my dad, my uncle also played, my great uncle, and they had a band together that still a band in some formation today, but they kind of had like a family bluegrass band that I was always around and kind of a part of. And, you know, it was weird because I, I remember the first type of music that I really liked. And honest to God, dude, it was like Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, in sync stuff like that you know what i mean like pop music but i when i first started like getting interest in guitar it was definitely bluegrass music for sure really yeah why didn't were you listening to in sync like second grade probably I mean, kindergarten first grade second grade oh, yeah, yeah you know like early 2000s i uh my older sister, you know, really listened to it, and that's what was around. She had an interesting taste, though, because I remember she also listened to uh, American Idiot, but that album from Green Day, and I was like, okay, this is, you know what I mean? That was later in life, obviously, but, but yeah, she would listen to a lot of pop music, and I felt like I got a lot of influence just, you know, really liking music then, but I didn't really want to play guitar. I didn't really show interest in playing guitar until, like, I started being around like my dad's bluegrass band more being around like my bluegrass family that plays, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I I probably was getting more into like uh, playing guitar, playing music. When, how old were you when you were getting into your dad's bluegrass? I was around like nine or 10, probably around that age. Yeah. When When I first started like picking it up. Okay. Picking up the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, did guitar, try you know, messed with mandolin for a while, but it was mostly uh, for a long time, man. I would just like I listened to like Jimmy Martin, um, Bill Monroe, uh, like Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, Ralph Stanley, stuff like that. You know, it was old bluegrass music. We would go to a lot of like bluegrass festivals and camp, and you know, do stuff like that. It was always fun. Wow, mm-hmm. that's really cool. Yeah, no, yes, yeah, I uh, enjoyed all that. It was fun. So when you first started, uh, you were playing a lot of bluegrass. Or? Yeah, primarily I was just doing bluegrass music, and I really wasn't like I was just mostly playing with my family, going to jams. Me and my cousin Tristan and this other, uh, she was a banjo player. Her name was uh, Stacy Robbins. I don't think she plays anymore, but. She, um, we like kind of formed like a little small group and would go and, you know, do random bluegrass shows. And I played with like, got a couple of gigs playing with uh, a couple of other artists. Like I played with this uh, guy named Alec Herdebees a lot. He was a banjo player and um, I would do like a couple gigs with him. But I honestly haven't played bluegrass like besides just for fun in a long time. You know what I mean? Right. I do it a lot for fun. But I don't, like, then I used to, that was really, like, the only guitar music I would, like, go out and play. But now it's, like, it's really different, you know what I mean? Right. Are there any, like, certain artists that, when you're younger, starting out, where you're like, man, they're badass, I want to be like them? Probably a mix of a, a couple of things. At first, it was, I really was into this guy, like I mentioned, Jimmy Martin. He was just a really good entertainer. I appreciated that about him, and I really like this guy named Tony Rice. Have you ever heard of him? Oh. He is like the uh, like flat picking guitar, like that is that bluegrass players do. He's like the fucking Jimi Hendrix of bluegrass guitar. He's insane. He uh, really like that kind of stuff. Really like stood out to me. And then I remember um, when I started getting in a little bit more into electric guitar, I was kind of listening to a little bit of country of what was on the radio. You know what I mean? What age were you when you got into electric? I was probably 12, 13, maybe. Something like that. Uh Maybe a little bit older. Yeah, somewhere around that time. 12 to 14, probably. 
I really liked uh, Brad Paisley. I liked that Brad Paisley was like, played these songs, but also was like his own lead guitar player. Have you ever heard Brad Paisley play guitar? Yeah, but not enough to be, a, I mean, not enough to yeah. have an opinion, really. Look up, uh, when you get time, Nervous Breakdown okay. is what it's called. Nervous Breakdown. Very cool video. He, very good country player. And that just always impressed me. So it was like, I, I kind of started getting into more electric guitar and and kind of, you know, going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> what electric guitar players were you? Man, it started off, I really liked Brad Paisley. And then Guitar Hero came out. Oh, you know what I mean? Oh, and I feel like that influenced that hit our generation. Yeah, I hit our generation heavy. Very hard. And... After that, I just got <clears throat> mind-fucked by a bunch of really good guitar music, you know what I mean? And there I uh, discovered uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. And Stevie Ray Vaughan was always, like, this impressive... I, honestly, I remember uh, hearing Stevie Ray Vaughan for the first time on Guitar Hero. And also, the Eagles do. Joe Walsh is another big one. Oh, yeah. I would say Stevie Ray Vaughan, Joe Walsh... And, hmm, Hendrix, obviously, you know what I mean? I, I feel like that's Hendrix. You know what I mean? How can you not love Hendrix? <laughs> yeah. Plus, yeah, I love the Joe Walsh song that's like, life's been good to me. Oh, yeah. Classic, man. The way that starts out. Yeah. Great riff. Yeah. I love that riff. He, uh, if you, I've got to see the Eagles a few times. Really? Yeah, it's really cool, man. I've seen them once with Glenn Fry, and then one, uh, like, recently after he passed. Wow. Mm -hmm. They put on an amazing Where show. Where did you see them? Uh, the first time I saw them was in Indianapolis. At the time, I think it was called Conseco Fieldhouse. And then I saw them at Bridgestone Arena down here in Nashville. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, great show. They don't... It's weird. They do. They have... They sound amazing, and the performance is good, but they don't move. Like, they, they just, you know what I mean? There's no, like, move. They don't move around. They just stand in one little place, and that's the show. It's great. But I've all, I noticed that the whole time. I'm like, wow, they they stay in their bubble. You know what I mean? They take it easy. They dude. take it oh, easy. Another level. At a whole other level, dude. <laughs> they are taking it easy at a whole other level. <laughs> they wrote that song. Right until the oh, end. Oh, right, right, exactly. If anybody ever questions their stance, hey. Yeah, take it take, they're taking it easy, dude. Yeah, I gotta they, live it. They need that peaceful, easy feeling, you know? Right. <laughs> you can't be singing that song running all over the stage. Right, true. Yeah, it's not it'll the vibe. Con it'll convey a different message. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like, oh, shit. He needs the anxiety. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's hilarious. Okay, cool. Did you, in high school, did you play any bands or anything? Or? I started playing, uh, there was an artist in our hometown named Brie Bragg, who, she was coming out with original music, and I met her through a mutual friend. They were dating at the time, and I started playing with her, and we would do, um, you know, shows around town, different showcases, small gigs, you know, stuff like that. But then I uh, met Dustin McKee. Yeah. When I met him, he was in a band called uh, Shiny Penny. And they were needed in need, I think at the time, they were, no, they, were, what it, they needed, they had a song that needed banjo. And he heard that my family was Hillbilly Bluegrasser. So he's like, are you interested in doing this song? I have no, I had no idea how to play banjo. And the song that they were covering that they wanted banjo was uh, In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry. Have you ever heard that song? Like it. Summertime. Like in the summertime. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They were covering that song, but they wanted a banjo in it. And they thought, since I came from a bluegrass family, I know I just knew yeah, how to do it. Natural. Yeah, and it definitely was. I like faked it enough to where they were like, okay, yeah, you, you could play the song with us live. And I, I would just randomly go to shows that they were playing. And if they wanted to play it and I was there and had, yeah, we would do it together. And, and then I think they needed a bass player and I played bass for a while. 
And then the bass, they got another bass player and I became kind of more of a utility guy. Like I played occasional guitar, a lot of keys, like this tambourine glockenspiel, like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. I did that in high school. I was in high school when I did all that for sure. Was that in high school band or just like... Just, yeah, just friends. Yeah, it was just... Because I didn't really... I didn't do that until I was a senior, honestly. I didn't really... Yeah, I played with... All throughout high school, I mostly just did the random, like, bluegrass gig or play shows with Bree. But yeah, I didn't do Shiny Penny. Was didn't be a part of that until high school. Yeah, my senior year, I would say. Okay, so you met Dustin in high school? Yeah, yeah. Actually, no, I met yeah I met Dustin my sophomore year of high school. Yeah, we were in geometry together. Oh yeah, yeah we were in geometry class in Miss Blaisdell's geometry class. That's where we met. And after uh, Shiny Penny happened, it, they kind of like. A lot of the members like disbanded and went off and did other things. And Dustin went off and he went to college. And my whole like I, I kind of just like fell in and out of just jamming with people. You know what I mean? That's when I felt like I started like writing my own songs. I guess you know what I mean? Yeah. Around that time frame, when I real I just like needed something to do. You know what I mean? Like, cause though it ended up not working out with those guys. And I was like, well, I fuck, I need to do something, you know what I mean? So that's when I feel like I, like, started, like, kind of writing songs on my own and shit, you know? It was, like, after high school, mm-hmm. college? Yeah, probably, because I ended up only doing, like, a year of community college. Did that, and during that time, I started, like, me, like, I worked with a guy, I worked at this uh, restaurant who, like, that makes roasted chicken when I lived in Kokomo, and... They, uh, there was a guy that worked there who's a rapper and would make his own rap albums out of his garage. And so I would go to his house and he would help me write songs and help record them. And he just liked, you know what I mean? He just believed in me. His name's Mike Spidell, Dirty White Mike. Dirty White Mike. Yeah, Dirty White Mike. Check him out. He's awesome. He, uh, really at that time, you know, he, uh, he believed me, believed in me when I didn't know that I, Anyone did, I guess. You know what I mean? And it leave me in a sense of like, oh, I'm able to like do other than just be a guitar player or, you know what I mean? It was nice, yeah. Branch out. Yeah, branch out, try other things. And there was a... He was like a mentor? Or? He was more of... You could say a mentor, yeah. He, he was really just a, a co-worker of mine who just believed in me and wanted to help me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, he's a super nice guy. And uh, really talented, too. But, yeah, we worked together at this place called uh, Country Squire. And him and I and another co-worker, we, like, wrote a radio jingle for him. I think they still use it. I don't know. (laughs) But, yeah, we've done a lot of fun stuff together. Is he still back in Kokomo? Mm Mm-hmm. He's in Kokomo. His daughter just graduated high school, I think. He was, was like, he was older than us. But, uh, yeah, he was just, like, at that time, he... um, where did you work with them? It was this place called Country Squire. They served roasted chicken. It was like a carry-out restaurant place. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was interesting. They would sometimes on Fridays let me bring my guitar and I would busk in front of the building and, like, just collect tips while people were coming in and getting their food. And I remember I did that for a while, and then there was some other kid that came up and was playing on the same corner that I would oh. play. And they... Yeah, I would always be like, yo, dude, how long you been here? You know what I mean? You're just my turf, you know? Yeah. Like, it didn't get that deep, but... <laughs> so, why would you say you were drawn to music? Probably my family have probably had the biggest part of it. They draw me... They, like, have presented it to me. But I feel like what music... About music that I like the most is the emotional connection like the lyrics may not necessarily have to mean something to me directly but if it makes me feel a certain way i feel like that's the most powerful thing you know what i mean yeah there's something that can like get a hook that's just stuck in my head i like i i think that's powerful you know what i mean yeah you know what i'm saying it's just like um when people are like pop music 
Like, I think, when I, when I mean pop music, there's a lot of things that I think. Like, I think it's Nirvana as pop music. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those songs are so catchy, and I'm like, how fucking genius. You know what I mean? Like, the, if something that you were able to just sing, even if you don't know the words, but you can hum it and whistle the tune, it's like, whoa. You know what I mean? That's cool to me. Ooh. That's probably, like, the what attracts me the most in music is the actual, like, emotional feeling that I get rather than because for sometimes it's like what what are the lyrics saying like oh i can connect with that right. but i feel like most of the time it's that like music how does it make me feel right. you know what i mean the actual music itself how does it touch you without you having to say anything exactly exactly right awesome now how do you develop your musical skills i would say now i uh just practice a lot i probably i which is kind of a bad practicing thing i do noodle a lot just like grab the guitar and just like you know play random shit i don't know if that's a good thing because i'm not really like practicing but here lately we've been doing a lot of like broadway gigs and stuff like that and i've been trying to like sit down and like if there's a song that i would think go over well just sit down learn it all and you know what i mean yeah just put in the time to just listen and try to figure out different things, you know, get more tricks up my sleeve, I guess. What was the hardest song you played on Broadway? The hardest song. I'll tell you a song that isn't hard to play, but is unexpectedly harder than it sounds. Stacy's mom, dude. Oh, you really? wouldn't guess let Stacy's mom, like at first you're like, okay, this is easy. You know what I mean? And then when it hits that pre-chorus chorus part, it's like, oh fuck, there's this song moves. It's crazy. I, I would say that that's one song. I don't think it's a hard song, but I'll have to like listen back. Yeah. To like really But there's a lot of changes. You know what I mean? Because there's some songs that you hear you're like, ah shit, that's three chords. We can fake that. You know what I mean? And then there's some where it's like, whoa, there's some really some moving parts there. You know what I mean? We'd have you would have to sit down and like kind of figure out where they all lie. Oh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'll have to listen to that again with a different... Plus, there's a key change at the end of it. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Who is it by again? Fountains of Wayne, I think, is the band. Oh, yeah. Fountains of Wayne. That was a classic, dude. Stacy's mom. Sick. Okay, cool. So, of all time and currently, what are your favorite bands and artists? The Eagles is way up there. The Eagles is way up there. I would say... Jimi Hendrix, like all of his stuff. He, uh, John Mayer was a big influence at one time. Now I'm currently listening uh, to a lot of different shit, dude. I'm Harry Styles. I love mm -hmm. Harry Styles, yeah. One band, dude, that I, I felt like not a lot of people remember them or even listen to them at the time, but I loved them. They were like a... Uh, a rock band uh, from Australia called Sick Puppies, dude. Do you know Sick about them? Sick Puppies? Sick Puppies. No. Yeah, they're they're kind of like that... Uh, have you ever heard of the band like Silver Chair? Yeah. They're yeah. like Silver Chair, Breaking Benjamin, like that. But they, they were like a power trio. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, they're cool. Sick Puppies. Mm -hmm. Sick okay. Puppies. They were a band that was like... like oh, high, When I was in high school, you know what I mean? They were really, like somewhat on the rise you know what i mean okay sick puppies what have you been listening to lately <sighs> man the last few albums that i've listened to i've been listening to a lot of the new jack white i really like hank williams jr came out with a new album hank three no hank bo cephas bro hank jr oh wow. and he made it with uh dan Auerbach and the black keys it's like a blues cover album it's insane. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, you should check it out. Williams Jr. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, I've been listening to a lot of that. I uh, am a sucker for, like, classic country music. I love, like, Willie Nelson, Webb Pierce, Patsy Cline, stuff like that. Dolly, can't go wrong with Dolly Parton. I like, yeah, a lot of classic country. There's a, uh, but, and also I'm, like, a, su a sucker for pop music, too. 
I uh, I really fuck with like Billy Eilish and Ariana oh, yeah. Grande. Yeah, dude. I think all that shit. Billy Eilish. I, I never really great. listened to Ariana Grande. Really? Yeah. She honestly, because I remember her. She was on a Nickelodeon show. And I remember her from the Nickelodeon show. And then when I saw that she was doing music, I was like, kind of blew it off. Like, they all do that. You know what I mean? Of course. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she did a song that I saw on an award show. And it was called Tattooed Heart. And it was like a, uh, just like a doo-wop, dude. And they kill it. She absolutely crushed it. Very, like, Mavis Staples. Like, um, you, you know the, uh, the Ronettes? Oh, yeah. It's very Ronettes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That type of, like, Phil Spector doo-wop wall. You know what I mean? That's what that song really... And she belts it, and I was like, oh, she's actually really good. And ever since then, I started uh, listening to her music and getting into that kind of stuff, too. I'll have to give her another chance or another shot to listen to her. Listen to Billy Eilish, I really like her. Oh, Billy Eilish Lana, is cool. Lana Del Rey. Lana's great, uh, man. Lana. Wonderful. How would you best describe the type of musician you are? That's a good question. At times, chaotic. I like to uh, tell stories with licks, if that makes sense. You know what I like mean? Riffs? Yeah, like, I kind of like, there's some people that. I don't necessarily want to be the guitar player that plays the quickest or the plays the most notes. I try to play within character of the song and try to tell like try to tell a story with the least amount of notes if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes I can get carried away on and you know go overboard and I always try to tend to um you know, reel back a little bit. Like, try to tell a story with less notes. You know what I mean? Right. Pull David Gilmore. Exactly, dude. Some big bends. <laughs> Your hats are high, dude. Make sure whole body. Mm-hmm. God. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Where would you say you find inspiration? Hmm. I would find inspiration, honestly, dude, two places while my airpods are on and i'm just like diving in deep you know what i mean it's like just going straight to the eardrums and also here lately when the pandemic really first started i uh, i got logic pro and i've been like making demos of songs making beats making little sounds a lot of inspiration comes from that just diving into that world yeah, I've really been learning about, like, just recording in yeah. general. And it's nice to be able to do it on your own terms so you can, like, fuck up and not feel bad about it. You know what I mean? Right. And so it, it's it's been cool to uh, learn to keep learning, you know what I mean? Because I'm still such a noob. Still such a noob. But it's, it's cool to be able to... I feel like I do get a lot of inspiration from just diving into that kind of stuff. Right. Being the orchestrator. Yeah, yeah. Really, it just like, because I've always, when we've recorded, you know, someone else does all that. You know what I mean? Someone else is pressing the buttons and moving everything. And when I started working in radio, I kind of learned, I like started to learn the basics of it. And now it's more of like, you know, mu- uh, music actually making rather than just audio. Yeah. So, how long have you been in Nashville now? It's been five years and almost eight months. Moved in 2016? Yeah. Yeah. And initially, what brought you here? Initially, Dustin and I, when we lived in Kokomo, he moved back from college to Kokomo, and we he hit me up, and I was playing in a cover rock band called Fly and Blind. We had some originals, and my dad was in the band. He was the fiddle player, and he was kind of the utility guy. He played fiddle, banjo, mandolin, and we had some originals that were the singers that he wrote, you know, a while back ago, but it was mostly just, like, cover gigs. We would play, you know, bars and 
fairs and shit like that. And Dustin contacted me about forming a group together. And at the time I was so busy with that, I was like, I don't think I could do it. And then the singer like slipped on a sheet of ice and like hurt his foot really bad and like had to get surgery. And I was like, hey, I got time now. <laughs> this happened, yeah. And then yeah, Dustin and I met up with Kirk Camaro and started jamming with him. And uh, we started a band called No Name Blues. And we did that in Indiana for a long time, just played every weekend recorded a little EP and then at the time when we were finishing the recording of the EP we all were kind of talking of like hey you know Dustin's dad was living in Nashville and was working and getting you know steady music gigs and I was working in radio at the time and the radio station was kind of like asking me what I what did the future look like for me and I mentioned that I want to go somewhere that's, you know, more inclined with music, like a bigger city, that I'm able to do more of that, and also work in possibly in radio still, and have more opportunities with that at another place. So at that point, I I started to, like, apply for radio jobs through the same company that I worked for, and I uh, got a phone call back from my now boss. And he's at, he said, the only position we have is we need someone to work the front desk. And I was like, sure, and just took it. And uh, I had to do an interview for it. And Dustin came with me to do my interview. And when he came down, we stopped at Sam Ash in Hendersonville. And he was like, hey, he's here for a job. I'm looking for a job. And they hired him on the spot. They're like, well, you got a job now. So we both had jobs places to live and we were ready to go you know what i mean and uh yeah we really just wanted to we finally were like wanted to expand ourselves musically in our band so the uh, the band just moved down nice. yeah man awesome what have you learned living here i've learned hmm i've learned that the music industry is a lot the music business is very different as being a music artist, if that makes sense. There's these business things that aren't so pretty, you know what I mean? Of just like these rules of just like with social media and streaming and like all the extra like business stuff that you would have to do for music. I feel like I've learned a lot of just like what's all entailed with that and how important it is. And also just how everyone's so good man you know what i mean that's really one thing it was like when i first went to my first blues jam it really knocked me on my ass because i walked in and i'm like holy fuck every guy that and girl that got up on the stage is ripping it right now they're all amazing and it's just like whoa you know what i mean oh yeah you really learned that there's some really good musicians out there you know what i mean oh yeah you first get here you get humble yeah you do get humble you're like fuck i'm not as good as i thought i was yeah you gotta pick yourself up yeah yeah like i gotta go practice now that's really what i learned yeah is that how and what the music industry really is compared to what i thought it was and just how really hard it is you know what i mean because people are always telling you like you know how hard it is you know to do anything down there and it's like you are right you know what i mean it is like a a pool of just people like just absolutely killing it but i feel like nashville is the type of place too where like it's very community oriented definitely and no one like no one i feel like are really like the actual people are snobby or bad people you know what i mean i feel like most other artists like or like supportive and be like, oh, I'll help you, you know, you'll help me and we'll all rise together. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, everyone is so good. You have to kind of like rise to the occasion. It kind of makes you better. Right. You just over time adapt. Yeah. Because I feel like at first it's intimidating. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you're like, I got to make connections. <laughs> right. Everybody. You're like... It's all overwhelming at first. Yeah, yeah, it is overwhelming. It's like, where do I even start? And uh, that can bug you out easily and make you give up. You know what I mean? Kudos to all the people that stick it out, dude. We're still here. We're all here still. We're all, yeah, still kicking it. Still kicking it, trying to make it happen, man. Yeah, I got here in 2017. Nice. This August will be fun. Yeah, congrats, man. Sorry, Kev. 
Congrats, congrats. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's been great. All right, cool. What is some advice you'd give to someone who's going to move here and pursue art? I would say make sure you're really ready to do it. I would say, A, make sure you are 100% ready to do it. Confidently, you can do it. And also realize that if it doesn't work out, you can sti- you're can you still able to do what you've always wanted to do without it. You know what I mean? Now, you like, say you don't, you come to Nashville and it doesn't work out, your musical life won't be over. You know what I mean? You right. could easily go in another city and, and have a career in music. You know what I mean? But I would say make sure you're ready. You know what I'm saying? Like, make sure, make sure for damn sure to know that you're able to mentally handle it. Because it's hard. Like we said, you know, when you first come, it's overwhelming. You're in a new place. Everyone's really good. Yeah. It's overwhelming. So just make sure you're ready for that. And also, another piece of advice I would say is find your crew. Like, find... Yeah make friends get like go talk to people do podcasts go to open jams shit the bed on stage a couple times you know what i mean go out and just meet people because soon you'll be able to find your crew and they're trying to do the same thing as you're doing and you know you'll just help each other out be like exactly be like oh we're doing this so this has popped up now and you know what i mean opportunities right right But yeah, make sure you're ready and make friends. Make friends. Definitely that. Big one, make friends. All right. What is your biggest personal growth from last year to this year? Ooh, that's a good one. I would say, thankfully, um, I've worked since being down here in Nashville. It's mostly the most time musically that I use is with my band, The Reveal, that I'm with. Dusty and Ian Fleming and with Ian joining the band on drums we've been kind of working that bone back up and it's he joined the band a year ago since this past weekend and um, from that point on from now I've noticed I have I usually work for a rate for in radio like during the week I quit doing that and now I'm just doing music because uh, we've been like playing gigs down on Broadway. And so far, I w- I've been able to make a, make a living just doing that for now and doing less radio work, which is awesome. Nice. Which is very awesome. Yeah, we uh, also, we've been recording a lot of new music. A lot of new music. And it's been a long time coming because, yeah, we haven't put out our last album that we put out was in 2019, I think. I think, yeah. And we just put out an EP of covers with one original song on it. But now we have, like, in the canon, a lot of stuff. Ooh, a lot of stuff. Right now we have... We have... Everything is written and ready. One EP... Another EP is recorded, has a couple of tweaks left and it's got to get mastered and is ready and then we've also been working on like a full album nice yeah yeah I like the new slaves yeah thank you thank you that was sick thank you thank you yeah we did that video uh, if you know where the garden family is it's like a warehouse where they sell like the cannabis stuff you know what I mean you can like buy the legal weed off of them the good legal stuff yeah right They. it's like it was over in one of those warehouses in an abandoned building. Nice. What was crazy, though, I forgot about this. We were in one of those buildings filming, and whoever owned it beforehand saw us filming in there, and they drove up while we were filming, and they were like, you owe us money now. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, that happened. Wow. Yeah, they like drove, this is our property unit and asked to be here. Like, you got to pay us like 200 bucks or something like that, and like... Kind of hassle us, and you know what I mean. Like, what did, you, what did y'all do? I think we end. I, we were like, we don't have it now. Like, but can we do it later? I think we ended up giving him some money, but I feel like also we may have like told him fuck. I don't know what we ended up doing, honestly. But I remember someone getting shitty with us. Really? Yeah. How long ago was that? 
that was wow man that was like coming up on a year since we filmed that really oh yeah man oh. we've we've had a lot of stuff there was a lot of stuff that we kind of held off from releasing because of covid and like lineup changes like kirk started a family with his fiance and they moved back home to indiana so in between transitions of that we still had like a lot of content with kirk that was good content but we were like, he's not exactly in the band. So we've slowly just been releasing it to have it out. You know what I mean? And now we're like just full grind of just stacking up just new recordings and a bunch of new shit, man. I'm excited about it. Sick. Super excited about it. How would you describe the music that y'all been making? Or... Egyptian hillbilly funk rock. Ooh. Egyptian hillbilly funk rock. That's how I would describe Yeah. That, and we have another EP that's coming out right after, and I would describe it as, uh, let me think. I'm trying to think of a good, like, country. Because the EP is primarily acoustic. Oh, really? Um, yeah. And it's kind of more of, like, a rural hillbilly, like, you know what I mean? You know the movie, uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah. It's a lot like, the, it's like that music, but if Biggie Smalls made it. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like the twist on that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of something crazy. Uh, you, you may listen to it and be like, this isn't Biggie Smalls, fuck off. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. No, but I, I get the vibe. I try, but yeah, it's like a acoustic hip-hop, I would say. Oh, mm-hmm. that's cool. Acoustic hip-hop. All right, is there anything else you want to say about the... Reveal. Go watch our uh, video, New Slaves, and check out on YouTube. Uh, right? Yeah, on YouTube, we have an EP out, uh, the War EP. You can check that out. We are uh, playing all a bunch of new shows downtown, and uh, we're playing. When, when is this going to come out? A couple weeks from now. Uh, September third, we're playing Possum Stock in Clarksville. That's going to be a fun time. Okay. Yeah, come check us out there. And, uh, yeah, man, I, we've, uh, we're rocking and rolling. I've just been, uh, doing, uh, playing in the reveal and my girlfriend's band, Violet Moons. I got some shows yeah. coming up. They have an album that's being released tomorrow. And you played on that. Yeah, yeah. A couple of songs I did. Not all of them, but, um, yeah, I play guitar on quite a few of them. And yeah, I'm, ex- I'm excited for them because it sounds really fucking good. Sick. They worked really hard on it, but yeah be looking for that and yeah the reveal like i said we have a cannonball of new shit coming out okay cool what kind of youtube videos do you like to watch i love rig rundowns dude rig rundowns yeah premier guitar the magazine i believe they're based here out of nashville they do rig rundowns where they go to concerts and they get the guitar player to, of the band or whoever to sit down and be like, these are my instruments, these are my amps, my pedals, and this is how I operate the show tonight. Yeah, it's cool. Nice. Yeah, it's really cool. So, I like those. I, I, lo- I love other podcasts. Do you know what I mean? I like to watch podcasts. That's fun. Yeah. I really like... I've been listening to Tim Dillon, dude. You like Tim Dillon? I've listened to him a little bit. Yeah, yeah I like Tim Dillon. And Chris Stefano and shit like that. Oh, that's really good. Nice. All right, is there anything that you would like to have been asked? Hmm. Just, uh, yeah, go stream uh, The Reveal and uh, follow us on Instagram, The Reveal Music, and come, we'll see you at a show sometime. Okay, so, last question. What is something absurd you will ever do? What's something absurd that I love to do? Yeah, either something you love that's absurd or... (laughs) Oh, gosh. Something absurd that I love to do. Or it could be something absurd that you love. I don't know. Hmm. That's a tough one. I'm trying to think of something that, like... Because I feel like... And when I'm like, if I really love something, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with this. I don't know that it's absurd. You know what I mean? That's interesting. I'm trying to think of something absurd that I love. I really, like, honestly, dude, I I love comedy. I, like, I love to laugh. Dark comedy, dude. dude. 
You know what like, I mean? Like, like Bill Hicks? Yeah. Like oh, that cop. I love Bill, Bill Hicks. Hicks. Fucking um, George Carlin, you know what I mean? Like, really just dark comedy, you know what I mean? Right. So, you know what I mean? Right. Something like, where it's like, ooh, like, ooh. you really said that. And it's like, ooh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Do you like, like, dark psychological thrillers or movies? I go, like, give me an example. Like, I don't know, like Shutter Island or like, um... Eh, I'll watch them. Yeah, I like them. I'm not like, uh, I would say like into them, but I like like thrillers like that. Or like yeah. dark comedy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, scary movies are like, I enjoy, I enjoy them honestly. I like being scared. It's fun. But I don't know, I'm that kind of guy too, dude. When I watch a scary movie, I gotta watch something funny right after. Like, oh, yeah, you Lighten up to. the mood, you got to, dude. Right. You gotta lighten up the mood, you know what I mean? Right. Because I feel like when I saw The Grudge, dude, that movie fucked me up so bad. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in my bed, shining a flashlight in a corner of my room, just like, fuck, she's gonna be there one of these times. I know she is. <laughs> oh, my God. And yeah, this dude. Grudge scared me bad. Dude. dude, that's how Halloween was for me. Yeah, oh, that God. scared me so. I was in like third grade. Scared the crap out of me. Oh God, that I was yeah. like always looking for Michael Myers. They're making a new one, dude. I oh, really. Yeah, I knew they're making Is a it? new uh, hollow. Like it's supposed to be like. Cause what's her name? What what, what was the uh, Jamie Lee Curtis? Jamie Lee Curtis is in this new one, but apparently what I've heard is Michael Myers is like done after this. She like kills off Michael Myers. And then they're gonna continue the friend. I think it, that was it. They're gonna oh, end it. Yeah, oh, they're gonna end it. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, it, but it also it made me think. I was like, well, they they just told you the fucking story. You know what I mean? Mike was gone then. Like, yeah. what's the point? Of it? I guess how the <laughs> right how how it goes down right. But I, I, I'll probably go see it. Yeah. I'll probably Did go see it. Did you watch the other two, Noah? The other... Is it like a final trilogy? Is I think there... I have seen... Because um, my, my girlfriend and I, Aubrey, we... Uh, the first movie we ever watched together, actually, was Halloween. Really? Yeah. The first one? Uh, the very first one, yeah. Like, the OG. And... Um, we watch it a lot, still, every now and then. Like, around Halloween, we'll definitely, like, watch it 800 times. But yeah, I've seen the, uh, is Rob Zombie, I think, made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah, seen all those, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, those are like, like Michael Myers, like Jack. Yeah, he's Michael Myers. like seven feet tall. Exactly, yeah. So weird. It's absurd. So, yeah, <laughs> that is absurd. Liking the Michael Myers, <laughs> that is your absurd, my absurd thing I like is the Michael Myers, of Rob the, Zombie's the, version. Yeah. Paul of Halloween. Eight yeah. feet tall. Yeah, oh, that man. fucking Michael Myers. Who's your wrestler? Yeah, he just... He, that did kind of piss me off, honestly. I'm just like, he's lost his, like, mystique. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, he was just all brutal. Yeah, soft. he was just like an asshole. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. He <laughs> lost his air of mystique, which he definitely kept in the first one. Right, right. Yeah, there was no uh, mystery behind Michael Myers. He was just like, oh, he's a maniac. Right. Right, yeah. Nice. Well, dude, thanks for coming up. Dude, thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah.